Well, congregation, we honor God's word when we rejoice at its promises, when we tremble at its warnings, and ultimately when we obey its instruction. Now, this past Sunday morning, we were looking at a startling warning passage uh, from Daniel chapter 5. Here, our title was The Writing on the Wall, and we were looking at the familiar story of Belshazzar. And our uh, sermon points really followed the storyline. First, we saw Belshazzar's foolish and sinful drunken party. Then we looked, secondly, at God's sobering warning of doom that came through Daniel. And then thirdly, we looked at Belshazzar's lack of repentance and God's final judgment on Belshazzar in Babylon. Now, for me, as I read through this story, one of the most frightening lines comes in verse 22, when Daniel confronts Belshazzar and says, But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this. And I think there are two uh, applications here for us. And the first one is teachability. Notice what Daniel says, Although you knew all this, all this. This is telling us that Belshazzar, he had lots of knowledge. God had been teaching Belshazzar many things through the life of Nebuchadnezzar. And God is teaching us every time we open his word, every time we have family devotions, or every time we come to God's house to use the means of grace. God is teaching each of us individually. And so I want you to stop and think What lessons has God been teaching you that you've ignored or maybe that you have forgotten? Maybe you once uh, had these lessons uh, deeply uh, impacted on your mind and imprinted on your mind. And and yet now as time passed, the the conviction has faded or uh, the, the, the lesson has been lost. Take five minutes to, to write down and to think. Where, what lessons has God been trying to teach me that I, have, that I have failed to learn? And pray, Lord, give me a teachable heart. And second, really flowing out of this application is the application of humility. Daniel says, but you have not humbled your heart. And so what does humility look like in, in this instance? Well, first it is to confess our failures in learning God's lessons. Uh, We've been proud in wanting to go our own way. And second, it's to find our refuge in Christ's salvation. That's a humble activity, to reach out the hand of faith, to receive the forgiveness and help that God gives in Christ. And third, it's to walk in humble obedience to God's word, praying for the Spirit's help. Well, may we not have to hear these words of verse 22 pronounced against us on that final judgment day.